we got a couple games to react to from last night. Yeah, let's start with this one, shall we? Uh, Thunder Mavericks. Woo-hoo-hoo. Dallas looked completely in control of this one until they didn't. SGA, 34-8-5. Jalen Williams, 14-9-6. Holmgren had 18. Luka, 18-12-10. Kyrie had nine points. A little odd night for everybody. Uh, it was a physical game, which we love. Thunder were down double digits at halftime. Maybe a lot of people turned it off or changed the channel. I've heard that happens a couple times. And then the second half unfolded, and it was a completely different ball game. SGA showing the world why he finished second in MVP votes. Uh, Chandler, th- they're young. They haven't been here before, and yet they seemed very poised last night. Yeah, this was this was an unbelievable second half to a game where everybody thought this game was over. Everybody thought this game was out of reach. Um, this game was extremely, extremely physical, and – when the Thunder went to this lineup at the end of the game with Kaysen Wallace and Lou Dort both on the floor guarding Kyrie and Luka, I feel like that changed everything because you had Shea with the ball in his hands creating, knocking down every mid-range jumper he he took. Uh, and this is with Jalen Williams having an off night, but he was still creating, getting in the paint. But when those two guys, they're so athletic, they're so physical, they made things really, really difficult uh on those two guys and they're almost making dallas dare pj washington beat him and he's getting great looks and to his credit he's knocking him down but you, you can't expect for the Mavs to be you know to win this game when luca and Kyrie aren't playing at that offensive level that we're used to seeing them play so i thought this was an unbelievable performance in the second half by the thunder to show this kind of grit and guts on the road and they know how important this win is when the team goes down three and one, there's 95% chance to win this series. When it's two to two, and whoever wins game five, they have an 85%. They have an 85% chance of winning this season, the series. So they just went back into Dallas, down double digits, and stole back home court. And now the momentum, like every other series, has just shifted all the way back to Oklahoma City. And now they have a chance at home to take care of business and really, you know get a nice uh, a nice cushion going into game six of the series. Crazy, Lou. Turnaround is happening. What'd you see? I was impressed, uh, especially <laughs> with a young team, right? Like, you know, we spoke about taking the training wheels off and stop making excuses or stop giving them compliments about it being a young team. This is a good basketball team, whether they're young, old, or indifferent. They're a good basketball team. And the thing that I was most impressed about, the last five minutes of the game, they said, you know what, we can score with the best of them, but we know we're an elite defensive team and we have a lot of different guys that can guard a lot of different positions. Let's hang our hats on the defensive end. Let's hunker down and get stops. And that's what that team was able to do. They just, for the last five minutes of the game, they concentrated on getting stops. And then on the other end of the floor, they trusted their leader. They trusted their best player, SGA, to make plays for them. They ch- trusted Jalen Williams to come in and make plays for them. And that's what those two guys did, was able to grind out a really gritty, gritty basketball game on the road, going back to OKC now with some momentum going their way in a newly three-game series. Very impressive win. I feel like we've spent a lot of time uh, in these here playoffs talking about the refs. But in this particular case, at least for now, they let them play, Chandler, and that's fun to see as a, as a fan watching on the television. Did you love it? I did love it, and, and you got to give Lou Dort credit. It's unbelievable how physical he's being with Luca, even before, as soon as he's on the floor. You, you watch him. He's picking him up 94 feet. He's constantly just putting a hand in his chest. He's making nothing easy for him. It's almost easier for Luca when he has the ball than without without the ball because uh, because Dort – it's just in his face, in his grill, nonstop. And that takes so much effort. That takes so much energy to do. And he's doing that the entire game. So, yeah, I think the, the refs, they, they are getting a little way. But when you bring the first, when you throw the first punch like Lou Dort does, you get a little bit more leniency with the whistle. And he, when you're that physical every single play, the ref's not going to blow the whistle. And you see before the game, the assistant coach for the Mavs, they're literally working on holding Luca's arms down while he's coming off pick and rolls, trying to emulate how physical Lou Dort <laughs> is and how much the referees are letting him get away with. But it, it's unbelievable what he's doing for the entire consistency of the game. He is just in his kitchen all night long, and that takes a toll on you. And then on the on the flip side, now you have Luca playing defense and exhausting his energy on that end just as much as the offensive end. You'll see inefficient nights like this. Plus, it's, it's, and you know it's what? fun to get. It's, yeah, go ahead, Lou. 
Yeah, I, I just want I just wanted to say and it and it's and that works for that works in OKC's favor, Chandler. You know, they were mocking it the beginning of the game, um, holding his arms down, this and that. But the minute that that game starts, soon as OKC scores the basketball, Lou Dort's turning around, he's pushing Luca, he's holding him before he even catches the ball. And what's Luca's Luca's response to that? He's stopping, throwing his head back, looking over at the referees, looking for an out. And the referees are like, "No, you're gonna have to play through this. You're gonna have to play through it." The fans have asked. Everybody were complaining. We want physicality back. We want that competitive spirit back. We know you guys can score a thousand points, but we want to see the rough and rugged NBA. We want to see you guys earn it. And OKC is playing that hand, and they're playing it perfect. And if they came, it came down to the end of that basketball game. At that point, I figured I feel like Luca was tired of getting pushed. He was tired of getting touched. He was tired of the physicality, and they started settling for jump shots. I think that style of play it worked in OKC's favor down that stretch. They got to be having a field day because we all know Luca's rep, and Lou, ju- you just talked about it. He spends more time kind of trying to engage with the refs. Which, if you're a Dallas Mavericks coach, an assistant coach, whoever, do you think they're constantly on him about that, or is he such a big star that they're not going to change that? No, they are on him, and it's a real issue, and it's a concern because if you watch the game, every single play he's got something to say, and and they obviously are showing him ways of you know of practicing the physicality and and playing through this contact that Lou, that Lou Dort is providing here. But it's still in the middle of the game when you're when things aren't going your way and you're missing shots and you feel like you're getting fouled every single play. He, he just he has to he has to talk to the ref. So I think it's something that obviously he's going to have to get better at. He's going to have to grow because he's too talented. He's too good to be worrying about <laughs> officiating. And every single night now for the rest of his career, the whole NBA is watching this. They're seeing how physical Lou Dort's being with him. There's and maybe they won't get away with it in the regular season, but he's got to be more mature. He's got to be better with just leaving the refs alone. He's too valuable for his, first of all, for his team, for him to be getting a technical foul. God forbid he gets two technical fouls and they get, and they get, he gets tossed. Then they're in real trouble. But yeah, it's just got to, it's hopefully it comes with his growth just to lay off the, lay off the refs because they're not going to change their call. No, I you forget too. He's 25. I mean, I think sometimes we're so used to seeing him that he's older in our minds. But there was a moment at the end of the game here, a non-call by Jalen Williams on a double dribble. Um, that was, you know, we can make of it what you will, guys. Lou, I'll start with you. Swallowing the whistle in this moment. You love it. You hate it. Yeah, I thought it was. I thought it was a double dribble, but I also see lively put his hand on the ball. I don't know the rules, but like right here when he puts his hand on the ball. I don't know if that's deemed a loose ball or what. It mm. looks like he obviously he has. To me, it's obvious that he has um, possession. But in the referee's eyes, at, um, going full speed, I don't know if this is considered him having, if if this is considered a loose ball or not. So it's kind of 50-50. I think in the eye of public opinion, it might be 50-50 to me. I thought it was a double dribble. Yeah, it's Dallas. It's just simply a blown call. A loose ball means the ball is loose and it's, you know, on the in the air on the floor. Yeah. This ball there was no there was no loss of possession here for Jalen Williams. So I think at this point in the game that, that is a that is a you know unfortunate missed call there because also lively clearly thought his he couldn't dribble because he just gave the whole basket up trying to stop him from passing the ball out. Um but yeah, this, again, when when you slow it down like this, it's not bang bang. Sure, we can sit here and blame the refs, and it's one play at the end of the gra- uh, end of the game, so it's a little magnified here. But it was definitely a double dribble. But you got to play on. You got to you know you got to get over it. Lou, we're gonna start with you on this next one because SGA had a hell of a fourth quarter. And what's fun about watching him now is that every season there's gonna be something more. He gets better and better. And now we're looking at him as a closer in this particular game. So would you uh, would you like to expand a little bit on what you saw from him in the fourth? Yeah, I love the fact that he's embracing just being the best player on his team. He's not shying away from big moments, not shying away from big plays. He wants that basketball in these situations. And if you're the OKC Thunder, that's what you want to see out of one of your best players, uh, out of your best player. You you want him to want that basketball coming down the stretch. And look at him. He's making tough shot after tough shot. And even the announcers, they were saying, hey, SGA has been lights out in the fourth quarter. He's been really special in the fourth quarters. And last night, he didn't disappoint at all. And every bucket that he made was needed. Every bucket that he made was a tough shot. It was contested. He took over this basketball game and grinded out the win that they needed on the offensive end. Give him a lot of credit. Yeah, and you watch the end of this game. 
the Oklahoma City Thunder, they look like the mature team. They look like the team with closures. We haven't even talked about the missed free throw by Luka with 10 seconds left. Then come down, insert a rookie, Chet Holmgren, at the free throw line. He knocks down both. So at the end of the day, this team was so poised down the stretch defensively. They took care of the ball. They took care of a, a you know a, a no call there on the on the baseline. They kept playing through the whistle. And I feel like sometimes when you're so young, you don't even have time to be nervous. You don't even have time to think. And this team is just playing, and they trust in their leader, SGA. Some of these pull-ups SGA were hitting were insane. One went literally over the backboard. He was just in his zone. And, and the Mavericks, I think they shot 52% from the free throw line. It's hard to win games when you're just giving up 10, 12, 14 points you know, at, at the free throw line. That is very, very tough to overcome. So I think down the stretch, the, the Thunder just looked like the older, mature team, which is crazy given how young they are. <laughs> it's insane to say out loud. The mid-range game on SGA. I, I, we love to make lists, top threes, top two, top five. Uh, where, where are we putting him right now, Lou? Uh, he's in the mix. He's he's in the mix. He's he's building on it. You know, I I think it's gonna be a few guys that are, that have something to say about the mid range game. You know, uh, Demar Derozan is elite mm -hmm. in that mid range. Uh, Shea Gilgis Alexander is elite in that mid range. Kawhi Leonard is elite. Devin Booker, Kevin Durant. These are guys that I'm thinking of off the top of my head without even taking a deep dive into my <laughs> into my catalog of guys in in the mid range. But he's right there, and it's something that. I've watched him work on in his game. You know, before the game was so three heavy and so analytical, he was coming into the league at a time where the mid range still had some value and he really worked on that, really worked on his touch around that rim and his paying dividends for him. Lou, do you take credit for any of this that I'm looking at right now? <laughs> I take credit for the I take credit for the for the fadeaways going left. I'm, I'm nice. pretty sure he <laughs> I'm pretty sure he found that found that little piece right there in my bag and put it in his. I take credit for that. <laughs> and you know that. what? You know what? You know what's crazy about this team too is you look at the the stat sheet and you look that uh, SGA was the only guy with a big game, but it does not matter when you have guys that make big plays down the stretch. Lou Dort hit crazy clutch threes in the corner. Chet Holmgren steps up like I talked about with the free throws, and he hit a big corner three. Jalen Williams made some big plays at the end of the stretch, so. When you have a balanced attack, I think that helps your overall offense. But when you have a guy like SGA that's closing the game like that, that's just in his rhythm, you need just guys to step up in moments of the game. And they had multiple different guys step up at any, every moment of the game, especially in the fourth quarter and down the stretch, yeah. where every time Dallas would kind of get up, cut it to six, cut it to seven, someone else was going. Cason Wallace would make a three. Lou Dort would make a corner three. They'd get a deflection. A huge turnover by Tim Hardaway Jr. at the end of the game that let Jalen Williams get out in the break. So they took advantage of every mistake that Dallas made. Although they know their second, third, fourth best players, they didn't have huge games. They all came up big in clutch moments. Uh, Luca and Kyrie, by the way, I mean we we've spoken so highly of everything they've done, Kyrie especially. And look, they they both had an off night, which is tough to sort of withstand if both your main guys are doing that. But nine points on eleven shots for Kyrie Irving is odd Chandler why does something like that happen on a night like last night game four it's inexcusable and this has happened again this has happened before in this series where he's you know taken eight shots nine shots whatever it was he's got to be aggressive and he almost felt this urgency last night you could tell in the fourth quarter okay this isn't you know this isn't Luca's night they're struggling the way they're guarding him is difficult Kyrie Irving's got to take over and they'll just whoever's on an ISO with one of those two guys They'll just throw a double team and they'll make Derek Jones. They'll make Tim Hardaway. They'll make PJ Washington, who, by the way, without PJ Washington, this series would probably Ooh. be over. He's been so good offensively. Uh, he, they, they're making these other guys beat shots. When you have two guys like Kyrie Irving and Luka Doncic, you know what they're going to usually give you, right? You know that they can explode. You know that they can score a lot of points. But we want to we want to make these other guys beat us. We want Daniel Gafford to have to finish. We want Derek Lively to have to make his free throws every time he's in the paint we're going to foul him. So when you look at this, the box score, it does look glaring because I don't care, Kyrie Irving, I, I don't care about the four for 11. I care about the 11. I, I would rather see that at 20, 22. Like he's one of the best offensive scorers of all time. Your season is on the line. I expect him to be uber aggressive in game five and him and Luca have to carry the majority of the load offensively because that is 
this team is dynamic, and that's where everything else opens up, and you can get that more balanced attack. It's when Tim Hardaway can get the open shots, or Josh Green can get the open looks. So you have to do that, but you have to start with those two guys being aggressive. But it's hard when you've got guys like Lou Dort and Cason Wallace and all these different guys on Thunder that can switch and be physical with you. So it's a hell of a series, and if I had to guess now, I think the momentum obviously goes back to Oklahoma City at home, but the Mavs have shown that they can beat them there as well. Yeah, you know, Chandler, I see it a little, I see it a little differently because I'm, I'm looking at the stat sheet, right? P.J. Washington was 7 for 19, and he's been, he's been assertive. He's been the guy that's been aggressive, right? And so sometimes when you have another guy that's cooking, that's in a good rhythm, even, uh, even Jones. Jones had 17 points on an efficient night. You know, these are guys that are taking the majority of the shots. And even though he's Kyrie Irving, I think he put himself in a facilitating mood at, at that point. Like, you know, it, it, it can possibly be too many chefs in the kitchen sometimes. I think that's the trouble that the Clippers get into. And that's where you get James Harden turning himself into a facilitator, kind of being passive a little bit. I think Kyrie kind of got caught up in that because, you know, the Dallas Mavericks, they were, they were in charge of this game for about 43 to 44 minutes of this yeah. basketball game. So, I, yeah, so I think in... Kyrie's head and I'm just I'm just guessing you know he's probably thinking the way that we're playing is efficient is self-sufficient enough for us to win this basketball game there's no need for me to try to take shots or or be aggressive at these points and by the time that he probably wanted that basketball OKC was already rolling on the on the other end and so I think this is something that he adjusts to opposed to just allowing this to happen again I think this is a one-off that's just how the game went for the Dallas Mavericks because like I said the way that they were playing up until the five minute mark, the four minute mark, it was working for them, you know? And so I think in game, uh, what, game five coming up, I think he's, we see a different version of Kyrie Irving. He doesn't wait for the game to come to him. And those damn free throws. It's weird to talk about a veteran star team sure. with free throws. Like that, that can't happen. Lucas said it, he knows.